Welcome back to Thread Talk. I'm Teresa. And I'm Denver. And today we're going to keep the theme of weddings. So last week we had the engagement stories and we really enjoyed those because there was some really juicy stories in that one. So if you haven't checked that one out, go to last week's episode. And then this week we're going to do weddings. So we're starting to plan our wedding, which is going to be happening next year in 2025. And where are we going? Destination wedding in Italy. That's just a right. small, small wedding. I think we finally figured out our venue. So we'll talk a little bit more about our wedding updates at the end of this episode. But for now, we're going to get into the best of Reddit's wedding stories. We've got a lot coming from Am I the Asshole, some confessions. Oh, I'm excited. We got we got some really good ones today. This is a juicy one. This is sure. a very juicy one. I was reading all of these stories and I was like, ah, oh, I can't wait to run these across for Teresa's opinions because some of them are so, so good. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okay. I'll go first. Uh, actually, I want to start the episode off okay. with a joke. Let's okay. see if Teresa finds my joke funny. You with your jokes. I like to have one joke per episode. We're going to get right into it on the beginning of this episode. So, it's a wedding joke. A newlywed couple has just arrived in their honeymoon suite. After unpacking, the husband took off his pants. Put these on, he said to his wife. She did, and they were obviously much too large. There's no way I can wear these. They're way too big, she said. Good. Now you know who wears the pants in this family, replied the husband. Flustered, the wife removed her panties and handed them to her husband and said, put these on. The husband looked at her tiny panties and said, there's no way I can get into these. To which the wife replied, you're darn right. At least not until you change your attitude. <laughs> mm, no, didn't win. Chisa didn't find that one funny. I don't know if I didn't get it. Well, it's like a, I think it's like a sexist thing because usually the men are supposed to wear the pants in the family, but I don't know. Yeah, but the end didn't really, it wasn't. Well, she was mad. She's like, you're not getting into these panties until you change your attitude because hmm. obviously the women have all the power. I mean, I don't know. Growing up in my household, it was uh, definitely my mom wore the pants, so. And I wear the pants too. Sure you do. <laughs> I feel like we are equal partners. We are equal. We are, <laughs> we equal. are equal. Nobody <laughs> makes any uh, dictations. Okay, All right. let's get into your first story. Okay, you want, you want me to go first? Unless you want me to go first. Okay, no, I'll go. Okay. All right, we'll start this one off. Am I the, this one's from Am I the Asshole? Um, and it was posted six months ago. Am I the asshole for not wanting to dedicate half of my wedding to my fiancé's sister? I, 29 female, got engaged to my boyfriend, Peter, 30 male, in early 2023, and our wedding is scheduled for early 2024. Peter has a sister, Olivia, who's 15 and was recently diagnosed <clears throat> with leukemia. She's receiving chemotherapy, and as far as I know, it's not terminal. One of Olivia's dreams in life is to get married. Ever since I've known her, she's talked about her future wedding and has planned every last detail. Since she got diagnosed, she's become very worried that she won't be able to have her dream wedding because she might pass before that happens. Based on what I know about her diagnosis, she'll likely survive and go on to live a full life, but it's a definite possibility she could die. Peter and I currently are currently in the wedding planning stage, and this is also where we might be the assholes. Peter's parents approached us a few days ago and asked if we would be willing to dedicate some of our wedding time to Olivia since she might not get her own. According to them, Olivia wants to wear a wedding dress, invite a lot of her friends, have a say in the food, cake, decorations, and have a first dance with her boyfriend. They said it's better to do all of this at me and Peter's wedding because then family can celebrate all together. Peter and I were shocked that they would ask this since we thought that our wedding would be about us. I know Olivia is struggling and I feel completely awful for her since no teenager should have their youth ruined by cancer, but I don't see why we can't have a separate party for Olivia instead of having to dedicate half of our day to her, especially since she would likely get most of the attention due to her condition. Additionally, it would cost a lot more money to have to pay for Olivia's friends to attend the wedding. Peter's parents only offer to pay for 75% of the additional cost, and Peter and I aren't made of money. Peter and I told Peter's parents we would think about it, but after discussing it, we decided it would be better to say no because we'd prefer our, our day to be about us, but would be more than willing to pitch in funds and help plan a separate party for Olivia. But when we informed Peter's parents, they were furious. They said they couldn't believe we were prioritizing ourselves over a child with cancer and that we're being selfish. 
They said this might be Olivia's last chance for a wedding, and how dare we deny her dying wish. I said I didn't understand why we couldn't have a separate party, but Peter's parents said they wanted to feel authentic for Olivia, so it would be better to do it on an actual wedding. When they started raising their voices, Peter and I left. But since then, Peter's family has been spamming us with messages about how terrible we're being to Olivia and how they can't believe we're not being considerate of her wishes. Peter and I both frequent this sub, so we wanted to know what the internet thinks. Are we being unreasonable here? Wow, that's heavy. That is heavy. I I don't know because like... What do you mean you don't know? What do you think? I think absolutely not. I don't think they're being too unreasonable. I don't think they are. Like, I don't think they need to bend over backwards, but it is tough because she's got cancer. Cancer sucks. But it's not terminal. And it's like, why does it have to be on this wedding day? I agree. Like, Like, like your wedding day is supposed to be special. And, like, can't they do a mock wedding, like, with just her friends and family? And also, if you are adding it on to the wedding... You're not even offering to 100% cover the cost. You're exactly. only paying for 75%, which is expensive. Like, if you want to add all of her friends and stuff there, you should be uh, going for 100%. And plus, if you want a more authentic feel, it doesn't feel authentic when it's like two weddings in one. Like, I, I, I think it's not unreasonable. I just think it's a shitty situation because she has cancer and that's heavy to deal with. That sucks. Okay, I get that, but I'm... I don't know. I'm feeling really strongly about this one. And I think absolutely not. You're not the asshole at all. It's not unreasonable to want your own day. Oh, for sure. And to not want 15 year olds. That's true. Claiming your wedding day. That is 100% true. Like, I don't think she's the asshole at all. I just think it's just kind of sucks because kid has cancer. Okay. Yes, that does suck. That's very unfortunate. It makes it very hard to say no. (laughs) I I don't think that should be the case. Like I don't think I don't don't think that should be an ask. No. Yeah. Like the parents are assholes for asking. I don't even think they should be asking and putting them in this situation. And honestly, hands off to Peter for you know not yeah yeah sticking with the wife or the fiance. It's nice that he sounds like he supports her and they made the decision together yes exactly it doesn't it sound like he's in the middle it sounds like he's on his fiance side yeah because if he was on his family side that's a red flag but it sounds like they have a solid relationship but yeah i mean i feel like it would be more special if you did like a little mock wedding with her boyfriend or anything but also it, you, you shouldn't i don't know i feel like if you like you do the wedding And then I feel like the kid has completed what they want to complete in life and they lose motivation. I mean, I feel like you should be positive and encouraging that you're going to get better. You're going to have your own real wedding one day. We don't need to do this because, you know, that's something that you need to look forward to. It's almost a little bit of motivation to get better. Yeah. I feel like it's sometimes with like, man, it was like when we we watched that Survivor season with Adam who won and his mom who passed away. Like that was was so so heartbreaking. But like she held on waiting to find some background of that waiting to find out if adam won what what kind of background well adam won a survivor season his mom had cancer and uh they were supposed to go on together and then they didn't and then he went on without her while she was pretty sick and he got back from the survivor season just as she passed away and she passed away like just after the day after he got home or like hours or something like that yeah it was like he got home after winning the season he got to tell her he won the season and then two hours later she passed away so it was was like like she was was holding holding on on for that you know i've heard a lot of stories about when people retire at a very old age like they're working until they're like 70s 80s and then they retire it doesn't take long for them to pass away because there's nothing to wake up to same thing with like when you get older and your spouse dies you know, usually the the other one remaining doesn't last too long because there's not much to wake up to in the morning. So it's kind of one of those things where it's motivation to, to wake up. That like is same, a great point. Yeah, but I don't think you should be taken away from anybody's wedding. No. And like if she, maybe if she was like terminal, terminal, like there's still, a difference. Even still then, like I think she should be having a separate party. Also, yeah. it's so weird. She's 15 Very years weird. old yeah. and she wants a wedding. And the parents are just okay with that? Well, you might have some insight on this, but me as a guy, like, I don't understand how it becomes someone's biggest dream in their life to be get married. But I think you might. Well, you, I you think it's just what society bit, right? has fed us growing up. But you kind of had a little bit of that before when we first met, didn't you? Yeah, it was kind of engraved in our brains. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah, wedding, wedding, wedding. Yeah, now that I'm an adult. <laughs> 
and engaged. <laughs> I don't think it is the most important thing, but as a as a kid, as a teenager, um, yeah, that is definitely something most teenage girls would look forward to. But I do think it's really weird that they're f- like 15 years old and the boyfriend and, and her are just supposed to pretend like they're getting married. Yeah, that's odd. It's There's so many... This is just very odd, and I, I don't know if I'm being too aggressive with this one, but I, it's a hard no for me. I, not that I don't feel sympathy for her. I understand cancer is so tragic, especially at that age, but I think this is so unreasonable of the parents. And Yeah, I agree. She needs to stand her ground, and I'm glad that she, she put her foot down with this. Okay, let's read the top comment. Oh, so overall vote is not the asshole. Thank God. Um, top comment not the asshole honestly i find the whole thing kind of repulsive a fake wedding for a maybe dying child is mold moldlin mod modlin and in very poor taste wearing a wedding dress is not a wedding cutting a cake is not a wedding having a first dance is not a wedding a wedding is a sacred commitment including god or not between two people who want to spend their lives together this is nothing but a farce tell her the truth she will live. She will be fine. She will go on with a million frogs way before she ever finds her prince. And when she'll when she's ready, she will have her wedding. No, that's so true. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that even more now. It's not special. It's it's just a little party. Exactly. You, like they can that's t- what she wants. Have a little mock party at your house. Exactly. Doesn't need to be a cool venue thing. Like. They could do all of this stuff on a separate event, separate occasion, and, you know, call it the wedding if that's what the the daughter wants. If she wants it to be a wedding, they can do, they can replicate, replicate everything. First dance, cake, wedding dress, if she wants, but like, and, and the kid might feel more special when, if it is all about her too. So there's also that. Yeah, for sure. So this one's so weird. I'm going to read another comment. Not the asshole. This request is way out of line and frankly quite creepy. They want to piggyback off the wedding to throw a fantasy party for a teen. Your wedding is your wedding and you should stick to your plan. Don't accept any friends from them as there will be no doubt be strings attached. They, the suggestion that they, not you, throw her a separate party is the one to go with, if at all. That ball should stay in their court, though. Seriously, consider eloping. I don't trust his parents to not try to spin your wedding into her fantasy wedding. She might just throw, show up in a white dress too. They have clearly lost all perspectives at this point. Consider a Vegas elopement. Edit to add that a wedding is authentic if there's an exchange of vows between two legal adults officiated by a JP priest, minister, or other party license to conduct weddings. The reception following is a party, not a wedding. Facts. Exactly. Facts. Facts. All right. Let's move on from this one because this one's aggravating me. Okay. <laughs> My, mine actually got deleted. I don't like it. Oh, no. It was a, am I the asshole for bringing six people with me to my niece's wedding? I do remember it. Dude, not six people brought uh, four of his kids and his girlfriend at the time or wife. And the bride's mother was pissed off at him because on his wedding invitation, it said him plus family. So he brought all of his kids. And luckily, some people didn't attend, so there was extra seats. Wait. But then his sister was ripping on him for bringing all of his kids when he wasn't supposed to bring all of his kids. But the invitation said him plus his family. Then that's that's fair. Right? Him plus family exactly. means kids. And it was only his sister who was mad at him. The bride was even like, my, apologized and said, that was my bad. I didn't plan accordingly. Like, I apologize. But his sister was still pissed off that he brought all of his kids. Was it a no kid wedding? No, no, no. There was lots of kids everywhere. It's just they didn't account. They didn't think he was going to bring his youngest kids who were like nine and stuff. How is this not communicated before? Exactly. He said, but family, they're like, oh, we thought you were only going to bring your two teenagers, not not your uh, 12 year old, nine year old, and eight year old. Well, how can you assume that? Oh, my God. Yep. That makes me so angry. So I was like, the dude did nothing wrong. Yeah. Poor guy. The bride wasn't even upset. Just his sister was the bride's mom. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do you have another? I do. But before we get into the stories, there was a thread that was, uh, it was Ask Reddit. Those who have been to a ruined wedding, what happened? <laughs> These ones are so Let's good. Let's hear it. 
The mother of the groom was an alcoholic for many years. She decided to quit drinking cold turkey a few days before his wedding. During the reception, she had a seizure and was taken to the hospital via ambulance. Oh, my God. Brutal. Wait, that's really sad. <laughs> yeah. It's not funny. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, I'm laughing because it's not funny, but it's on here. <laughs> okay, next one. Not something I experienced myself, but my best friend is the son of the best man and the bride. He was conceived at the wedding and raised by the bride and groom. Oh, <laughs> son of the best man and the bride. Yeah, that one took years to come out. Eee. That was rough. Wedding itself was fine, and I guess, but everyone on the bu- <laughs> everyone on the buffet line was very openly taking bets on how soon the bride would start having affairs. I said six months and was four months over. The marriage lasted a year. That's not respectful. No. Who starts taking bets? At the wedding. At the wedding. That's so rude. That's really distasteful. That's so distasteful. Ozzy bride married into Russian family. There was vodka bottles on every table. (laughs) The bride tried to keep up with the vodka shots. I was impressed at her effort. She then disappeared for a couple hours and didn't move much for the rest of the night. (laughs) Wasted. (laughs) Attended a wedding ceremony and was seated near the cameraman. An aunt of mine was sitting closer to the cameraman and spent the evening commenting and gossiping about everyone, and much of it came out on the video. The cameraman (gasps) was great. He did two copies, one edited and the other no holds barred. The unedited version is the stuff of legend. Top comment on that comment. Bonus DVD features. Director's (laughs) commentary. (laughs) Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, spicy. (laughs) Because it's like everyone gossips, obviously. There's going to be lots of gossip at weddings. But caught red-handed. $28,000 wedding paid for by the father of the bride. Groom gets alcohol poisoning and goes to the hospital 30 minutes before. Not a happy papa, but there was plenty of extra $600 cake. Wow. That sucks. Next one. Sorry, can I just? Yeah. I don't, I don't. What do you think about getting drunk at your wedding? I mean, you can have drinks and have a good time, but nobody should be getting blackout wasted no matter where you go. I agree. Because like I can like, like, and also it's timing. Like don't get smashed at the very beginning. Like if it's one, maybe at the end. Yeah. If it's one, 2 a.m. And like at that point now you're like nine, 10 drinks in, you're wasted having a good time. It's time to go home. Sure. No problem. It's even okay to get wasted enough where you got the spins and maybe you vomit. But if you are drinking so fast, so quick to get blackout wasted, you got an issue. Yeah. To me, that's honestly a red flag. I mean, that's I, concerning I, to me. I, I would be pissed off. Like if, if everyone's having a good time and the drinks are flowing and it's just like going with the party and it's you're just kind of like everybody's drinking. I, I don't see an issue with that. But if you're like, yeah, the odd one out and you're the only one who's drinking a lot and stuff like that, like that's that's an issue. But especially that it happened before the wedding. That's especially so before the wedding. Terrible. I wouldn't even be drinking until like halfway through the, the reception. The reception. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like couple... Once the dance floor opens. Yeah, exactly. Or even with dinner. Like, that's totally fine. But before the wedding. Yeah. Oh, that's no. ew. <laughs> exactly. Next one. It was a big wedding. Over 300 people. Turns out the bride had been having an affair with her cousin's husband. The cousin had known for a little bit, but waited until the wedding to go table to table, letting everyone know the bride was sleeping with her husband. Poor groom was blindsided. Worst part was his father-in-law was well off and opened up a restaurant for him. Well, he (gasps) lost his wife and restaurant. Ooh. Oh my God. Why do that at the wedding? Poor guy. Why not do it before? Save everyone embarrassment. No, I like it. I like it. Blow her shit up on that day. Yeah, but then you're ruining the groom. Like, that is so embarrassing for him. Like, Uh, we're all Innocent casualties. No, I don't like that. That could have been done before. Mm, I like it. (laughs) Not as dramatic as some of the comments on here, but very awkward. Was a very lovely wedding. Really romantic. All candlelit. And the reception was lovely. Best man made a good speech. Then at the end, he said, everybody raise your glasses too. He said the groom's name and then accidentally called the bride the ex-wife's name. <gasps> oh, that's embarrassing. That's bad. A fight broke out between father of the bride, brother of the bride, and some guy that just happened to be staying in the hotel. In reality, I don't know how much of a fight it was. More just the dad and brother assaulting some man. So anyway, they were both arrested. 
Cut to the bride sobbing at breakfast because her dad and brother spent the evening of her wedding in jail and now face assault charges for what they did to this poor man. Oh, my God. So people are unhinged. Yeah. During the mixed gender bachelor party, the bride to be got in a spat with the groom and slept with another guy. Wedding was off the next morning. They lost 10 plus K. He took her back a couple months later, too. Oh, my God. I don't understand people that do that. What? That just like just you get in a fight and you go sleep with somebody yeah. else. No, especially at like your bachelorette bachelor party. Like, yeah, that's red flag disaster couple. The wedding was at a state park that was famous for a giant gorge waterfall. I don't know whose idea it was, but someone suggested a photo overlooking the gorge, and everybody was game. The wedding party went around a stone security barrier, and the maid of honor literally fell off the cliff to her death. <gasps> it was five hundred plus feet. My God, that just reminds me when when we went to Yosemite. Like, I don't like going near any edges or anything like that. That is Ugh. terrifying. Absolutely, that's the terrifying. worst one. Oh my God! There's one more here. Oh, it just got chills. That is a creepy one. Father of the bride died suddenly three days before the wedding, pre-COVID. Daddy daughter dance was mom, bride, and a picture of dad. Same with walking down the aisle to give her away. Lots of tears, not many smiles. Even the bartender at the hotel knew the night before and was talking about it with him. Wow. Yeah. Ugh. All right. All right. I think your turn now. I had enough. I can do the reset here. All right. This one comes from Am I the Asshole? No, I lied. This one comes from Best of Redditor Updates. Um, But the original post was in, in Am I the Asshole? Am I the asshole for refusing to pay friend who paid for my wedding dress? Hey Reddit, I was looking to buy this dress from a brand in New York City. Because I'm not based there, the only option was to go through a retailer where I'm based at and would cost $2.4,000 excluding alterations. I found a listing from Still White and it was the exact dress I wanted in my size and brand new. The previous owner had cancelled her wedding for $900. My longtime friend from school, Serena, who happened to be in New York at the time, agreed to pick it up for me and bring it back with her to where I'm based, where she's also from. I was really grateful and happy, and I was even intending to gift her $100 on top of the Uber rides to and from the place I said I would reimburse as my token of appreciation. However, my joy turned to shock, horror, dismay, disbelief, when I saw Serena's Instagram story showcasing her trying my wedding dress. I called her out for it, telling her I wasn't happy. She not only tried it without my permission, but posted it for the public to see. She didn't take it down even after the conversation we had about this. To make matters worse, she admitted she collected the dress posing as me. Through an email bill later, I noticed that the dress had also been altered, brackets, what the fuck, on the spot, all without my knowledge or consent. When confronted, Serena nonchalantly stated that it was her one chance to try a wedding gown and insisted I should get over it and reimburse her for the $900 she paid for the dress. My wedding dress experience was entirely hijacked. I'm now hesitant to pay her back. This all happened yesterday and she reached out today to ask for the money back and told me to get over it because she needs to make a big purchase tomorrow and it would help her cash flow. (laughs) Since she wants it so bad, she can now have it. Am I the asshole? Wait, she's going to give her the money? No. No, the dress. She, she ha- had the dress. She- yeah, yeah, fuck you. She hasn't decided if she's going to pay. No, her. don't pay. Don't pay. You altered it. It's no longer my wedding dress. You have to go shopping for a whole new wedding dress now, which sucks because somebody tried on your wedding dress. I feel like that's bad juju. It is bad juju. in your wedding dress. Not to mention the entitledness and disgusting behavior of this person. Be like, oh, you want to make a big purchase? Maybe you shouldn't have messed up my dress and altered it and then tried it on and posted a picture and stuff. You can keep the dress now. I'm going to go get a different one. Mm. That's so weird that she would alter. Okay. Trying it on and posting it is very weird too. Very weird. But it's not the worst thing that not can happen. Thing. Altering it as if it's your own. Trying it on is one thing. Posting on social media is another thing. Even trying thing. it on is like, it's really weird. Really weird. But then posting on social media is wrong because now there's a picture of what the wedding dress looks yeah. like before the wedding. So I wouldn't even want to use that wedding dress anymore. Exactly. And I'm sure like if they're best friends, I'm sure the fiance is following this. Exactly. This friend. Exactly. Probably seen the wedding dress then. Yeah. 
and telling her to get over and stuff. Like, you get over it. You now have a wedding dress. I think she's a sociopath. I think she is. <laughs> you need to let her keep the dress and cut that chick from your life. Like, I don't think she really best had friend? best friend from high school. How could that be a best friend if someone's going to treat you like that? Like, I can't, yeah. You need I to can't... rethink your friend, if friend choices after that one. No, exactly. I don't see anyone, like, any of my friends ever doing Never. that. Like, that's, it, <laughs> it's crazy, actually. It literally is crazy. That's psychopath behavior. Okay, so some relevant comments. Um... What kind of alterations can be done on the spot? OP responds, it was a waste alteration. For context, this bridal shop had a seamstress in-house and for dresses to to bought off the rack, they offer on-the-spot alterations unless it is significant. In this case, it was the waste. Okay. So I guess it's not significant, but... I mean, still... Significant enough where I would... Uh, what runs through people's minds? Like, literally. why would she... I don't understand. Why would she get her waist alterated? Al- altered. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Uh, okay, there's an update. Update one. First of all, thank you to everyone for being so empathetic and indignant on my behalf. I don't feel crazy anymore. When I saw her post, I completely lost it and I cried so pathetically. Aww. I know everyone must be wondering why am I even friends with Serena and how that reflects on me as a person too. Serena and I go a long way back. I have always known Serena is a shitty friend, but I still kept her around because of her mental health struggles. I was the only friend connected to her family, so if anything, I would have been the one to sound the alarm. I don't think I could have lived with with the guilt if anything really happened to Serena. But, well, I guess my job is done because Serena's audacity tells me she's in a much better place. Good for her. Moving forward, I don't have the dress on hand yet because it's still in New York with her. She's coming back to where we're based February 24th. I agree that she was doing me a favor and for that I will still pay her for the dress. After all, it is $900, but with the following terms. I will only pay her upon receipt of the dress. The trust is completely broken. I don't know what else she might do to the dress. Sleep in it? I unfortunately need this leverage over her until I have it in my hands. Else she has no incentive to keep her hands off of it. For all I know, she chucked it in the dusty storage to spite me. Two, I will pay her for the 900 minus the cost of dry cleaning and alterations. It's like borrowing a friend's clothing and not washing it before returning it. Did I mention she also tried it after her Pilates class without showering? Haha. Ha. I think this arrangement is fair and I would not owe her anything. Three, I will end this friendship. To be honest, I think if Serena and I met as adults, we wouldn't be friends. The friendship has ran its course, and I think I did the best thing I could in this situation. She for real said I'm pulling an Anna Sorokin on her. Serena called me a con artist and isn't even sorry that she reigned all over my parade. Friend? Human? Number four, she's uninvited. Need I say more? Wow. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that That's very reasonable. Very and reasonable. And very reasonable request to... Um, do 900 minus the alterations and dry cleaning because yeah like now she has to spend more money exactly for alterations yeah and it's probably dirty who like, alters a dress that isn't theirs who does that it was beyond me beyond me that is i'm glad outrageous. they're not friends anymore they shouldn't be yeah oh very mature decision okay there's another update update oh, wow. two serena had actually told me there were lipstick stains on the dress and offered to buy a stain pen Later, I found out from the shop owner that the stains were actually caused by Serena. So Serena not only lied blatantly, but tried to cover up her vile behavior by coming across helpful. I have since reverted to Serena. I gave Serena two options. Sell it to me at half the cost to cover alterations and dry cleaning, or sell it to someone else. She chose option two and showed no true remorse. End of story and friendship. Shout out to my friends in Reddit community. Happy holidays. Wow. Yeah. I honestly I wouldn't even want that dress. Yeah, exactly. I would want a different dress after that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, I'm mm. I'm gl- I'm happy with that outcome because um yeah, she's disgusting behavior. She doesn't have to deal with it anymore. At least like the friend it's hers now. She can sell it. Do whatever I have no it. no ties to it. I have no obligations to pay you. It's yours. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. My turn. All right. This one. 
this is the best story that I have. Is it? This is going to be the peak of the episode. Oh, okay. Okay. So this one is actually coming from Pro Revenge. It's really long, so I'm going to kind of summarize the first half because she's basically talking about her life, and then I'll, I'll jump into the, the meat of the story. But this one was posted four days ago, 12,000 upvotes. Uh, it's coming from a throwaway account called Sister and My Wedding. Title is, Sister Wants to Walk Down the Aisle at My Wedding. We use that to our advantage. So at the beginning of the story, she talks about how she's had a terrible childhood. Um, she has one older sister. It seems like she was unplanned. And the older sister was the, the golden child with her parents. Her parents basically took her side on everything. This girl had a terrible childhood. The parents paid for the older sister to go to college. Um, during high school, she would always try to steal this girl's boyfriends. And then she would have to take the blame. So eventually, she stopped bringing any friends around um, the house. She stopped bringing any boyfriends friends around the house uh she pretty much had it in her mind that her parents weren't going to pay for college so she worked her butt off and got a full scholarship and went to school and left on lived on campus and got away from her family met someone at college that she fell in love with the only time she brought him home was after they were engaged because this is how much she's trying to stay away from her family Mm -hmm. and she knew and she prepped him before that her family were going to like do something and try to turn her, turn him against her and stuff like that. And not only did they do that, but then they recommended to him that the older daughter has this plan that she wants to walk down the aisle in a white wedding dress before the the main person's sister or the main person could walk down the aisle at her own wedding. Why? <laughs> because I, it's like the sister wants to ruin her life. She wants to take anything away from her whenever she can. So I'll kind of get into the story. Basically, the husband goes in and he records it. He was prepared. He had like mini microphones everywhere and he recorded it. Wait, the husband? Uh, the I guess the fiance, the fiance at this time. They're writing this on the honeymoon. So like now they're married and stuff. Okay. Um, so they, uh, let's see. Yeah, so it goes through her whole childhood. And then I'm just going to find the part in the story. She says college was her savior. Yeah, it was a very long one. So husband goes in and comes about. So he went off alone and excited to meet them and came back later euphoric. Babe, babe, you won't believe the awful shit they wanted. Babe, we can fuck them over so bad. There's so many possibilities. I was confused and wanted to hear the recording, but he smartly told me it was better to listen to him first or I'll misunderstand him. Well, he was there, and instead of the flirting, my parents and sister sat him down. After some grumbling on about them not being okay with him, my judgment, they proclaimed that they were willing to pay for my wedding on one condition. My sister would walk down the aisle on my wedding first, in a wedding dress. Their excuse was that there wasn't, their excuse was that what it wasn't okay for a younger sister to marry first. <gasps> So it was only fair if my sister had at least the experience of it on my venue with pictures being taken and the dress and she'd have a cake later too, etc. And a fake fiance, fake husband? I don't know about that part. (laughs) I'm sorry. It didn't seem like it. It seemed like she just wanted to walk down the aisle first. Oh my God. My husband is now the type, his part. Uh, he goes on and talks about it. Basically, the husband is like very revengeful. He's happy to stick it to people. She is kind of a little bit like a doormat she wants to avoid confrontation she'll avoid it at all costs so she's very happy for her now husband's like uh posture and being able to stand up for himself so my husband sincerely recounted how my parents wanted even my wedding to be about my sister with a grin on his face and he has the recording to prove it i was shocked the distance had softened how bad they treated me and i thought even they wouldn't go so far Thankfully, my husband insisted on the angle of revenge, helped me not go into a bad headspace. We had a blast thinking of ways to screw them over about this, from ridiculously outlandish to what we thought was feasible. We then called this much more level-headed brother than decide on a plan. It was involved having two venue addresses, giving them the wrong one, etc. Well, level-headed brother scolded us for it. While he acknowledged he would never be able to convince us from retaliation, he at least showed us something like that would be hard to pull off. Some of our other ideas were also at danger of getting sued. So we eventually settled on the most benign plan. Act like we agreed and then hire security and don't let her in. Obviously, if that was all, it wouldn't be pro-revenge. 
The rest of it is mostly my husband, but he wants me to do the honors, so here it goes. Just important to mention, everything he did was previously discussed with me, and here were our mutual ideas. He went back to my parents. He said he probed and thought I wouldn't be down for it. However, he didn't see the issue, and not wanting family to fall apart would be down to helping them do it. He pointed out that I don't like conflict, so if I was surprised with it, he might not throw a ta- I might not throw a tantrum in front of all the people. On the other hand, marriage is a big thing, so who knew if I'd lash out? Thus, he suggested a compromise. They'd hate, help pay for the stuff. This way, I would feel more pressure to not say anything, as not only would we be in public while well, with our families there, but we, I'd also be grateful for the help that they give and that would mollify me. Totally. He said, my parents looked surprised, but my grown sister started skipping with joy. Literally, so like a kid, it was accepted. Important. My husband also claimed that due to some bad judgment in boyfriends in the past, these words were all my idea, and I'm so proud of using their words against them. I was distrustful and controlling, and liked to check his phone and stuff to ensure he wasn't cheating on me. As such, it was imperative that nothing of this plan was ever put into writing. For any discussion pertaining to my sister walking down the aisle before me had to go over in their house to talk. And so began the months of deception, where my parents and sister thought they were tricking me, and my husband and I were milking them. Oh, I love it. How? Well, rather than paying for the wedding, then lay low. Of course, my parents wanted input in everything. Some stuff that meant a lot to me. The songs and the color palette. My husband would convince them to let it go to keep me in line. But since we never really cared for the ceremony to begin with, everything else was game. Or so they thought. What we did was thus. We'd go, say, go check the drink menu and options. Then we'd accept the lowest or second lowest priced option. My husband would then secretly take my sister there to also try it out. Then sigh and say it's a pity we don't want to abuse my parents' goodwill so I wouldn't get the best options. Cue my sister demanding my parents pay for the best. My parents would then tell me not to worry and they'd pay for the most expensive. Same was done with the photographer. Flowers. My husband handed my sister a bouquet of flowers we wanted, then sadly expressed how I wanted some other tasteless flowers. Cue my parents telling me they wanted us to go with the said flowers and they'd pay for it. Oh my god. Wedding dress. We hit a minor snag here. My parents wanted me to use a hideous dress. Okay, not outright hideous, but it wasn't my style and wouldn't look that good on me. We had planned to say yes and then simply not using it. My mom sent me a message about it so there'd be proof I said okay. We had to go with me refusing in text, standing my ground. My husband went over and said he did what he could. My sister suggested ruining my desired dress so I'd be forced to wear the other one. He pretended to agree. During this time, they really kept communications outside any text. We made sure that would happen by when my sister tried messaging my husband, have me reply to her. This solidified that I'm controlling and neurotic claims my husband was making. So they believed it and never risked anything in writing. And maybe some people might not like the thought of their partner going around and talking badly about them to family, but I'm such a doormat that I thought of being painted of this controlling and dangerous bitch was extremely funny to me, and I egged him on to do it. I guess I have a warped sense of humor, lol. Oh, and my sister did try to flirt with him, but he acted conflicted. Because during her whole childhood, every time she'd bring a boyfriend over, uh, her sister would mm-hmm. like constantly flirt with them and try to steal them, and their boyfriends would come and tell her. Oh my god. Also, to really sell that he was with them, my husband would pretend to tell them things without my knowledge, but he never told them we hired security. It was really funny. My husband and I, who have sincerely considered a courthouse wedding to focus costs on our honeymoon, having this extravagant, expensive wedding and barely spending a dime, (laughs) we called it payback for emotional damages from my parents, lol. I think my husband, okay, he just confirmed I'm right, lol was enjoying the whole tricking them more than planning our wedding. I didn't think it was possible to witness a guy beaming at the thought of wasting his whole Saturday doing a car trip to discuss wedding details with his in-laws. But here we are. Soon the day came. My, the plan my parents slash sister slash husband had come up with was wait until everyone was seated. Since the bride always comes out late, they'd have my sister arrive at the precise time to avoid me seeing her and trying to stop it and walk down the aisle. By the time I heard what happened, it'd be too late to do anything. 
As for my dress, we saved some of the leftover fabric from my dress alterations, and my husband took it to my parents' place, sister was still lives with them even now, and showed them as proof he'd ruined the dress. Then said he had to go back to me as I was raging and he needed to calm me down. He'd see them at the wedding. We made sure to keep our actual security hidden at first as the guest and my parents arrived. All they could see was a woman with a list of names to check. Only after my parents arrived and sat down did we bring out security. A guy that looked like a bodyguard, we told him not to allow my sister in and even agreed to paying a handsome tip if he didn't reveal that we told him that. Soon, the time arrived. My parents got a text from my sister was less than five minutes away, so my, ba- my dad went and told people to start. My bridemaids had been told to follow his lead beforehand, so they obeyed without checking with me. After they all went down and took their places, my dad stood up at the entrance as if waiting for me. During this, a friend not in the wedding party texts me to get ready. This because if my husband or bridesmaids took out her phones and started texting, people might notice. This friend was in on the plan. She's my husband's friend and was willing to help stir the drama as he is and didn't care about being a bridesmaid or anything. Well, as soon as my dad took his position, the bridal song started playing, the doors open, and I come in. Yes. My dad looked aghast at me being there. He tried glancing behind me, but you could see the venue entrance from where we were, so he couldn't see what happened to my sister. And then his phone rang. <clears throat> I saw the caller ID, and it was her. He just left me there with a mumbled Something came up. There were gasps and confusion all around. The friend was in on it and loudly asked what happened. I lied in a teary voice and he said he told me it wasn't supposed to be me there. It's not what he said, but when my husband and I agreed that if he dared to leave me, I should say that to make him look the worst as possible. As for the tears, I wish I could say they were just my style of acting, but no. Despite everything, a part of me didn't think you'd go as far as to abandon me. That the sister thing wasn't true, but an elaborate joke. I don't know. I was still hurt, still am, so I'm sincerely trying not to cry. The friend then loudly went, what did he mean by it shouldn't be you? So that as many people as possible could hear and spread it. Then went, I will go back and check and ran off. We decided to do this to make her create hell with the security and stop my dad from coming back and stopping the ceremony or something. At some point, my mom also left. At this point, my husband's dad quickly ran over and took my arm. He had been forewarned he might need to. Watching him run desperately to help me made me smile. I walked down the aisle to whispers as people discuss what happened. Apparently, some left to check too. When I reached my husband, though, all was well. He made me feel better, joking my sad face was so real I deserved an Oscar. And don't worry, he'd rake them over the coals for what they did. We got married without a hitch. My parents didn't come back in. I did notice a lot of people leaving then coming back in during the party, but no one dared tell me what was happening. Someone did come and whisper in my husband's ear, and he went out. He came back after a while, a thunderous expression, but whispered in my ear he needed to go hide somewhere before he broke character and started smiling. (laughs) Well, what happened is it worked. The following is a summed up account from my friends, family, the security guy and my husband that I received afterwards. My sister did arrive in a wedding dress. The security refused to let her in. Per our agreement, he claimed she must be at the wrong venue because there was already a bride here. And yes, we tipped him very well as promised. My dad went there and tried threatening him to call the police, claiming he never heard of him, so he couldn't be working there. The security agreed to the police since he was hired by us and doing his job. My dad realized by then it is too late and tried to demand he let my sister in. At this point, the friend came over and started shouting and insulting my sister and asking what is going on, basically stalling. My mom soon came and eventually other people. At this point, the wedding plan was bust. All my parents could do now is damage control to everyone that learned about it and was aghast that they would try and pull it and screaming and berating them. The three naturally said it wasn't a secret and threw my husband under the bus. At this point, Mm -hmm. my husband was summoned. When he came over, he put on his best look of confusion and denied, denied, denied. To quote him, gaslight, gatekeep, 
and girl boss. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to use that. <laughs> he denied ever agreeing to something so ridiculous. When they insisted he did, he demanded proof. And of course, they couldn't produce any. All text exchange they could produce were about normal wedding decisions. My sister was scream crying and apparently sat on the floor kicking her legs like a kid. My dad looked like he'd beat my husband, but security and other people held them back. Of course, they said they had no proof because my husband told them not to text. My husband laughed and said, wow, how convenient, huh? Then again repeated, why would I ever agree to something so fucked up? Torn them and tore them a new one about being awful parents and said that he wasn't going to let their stupid plans and lying get in the way of his wedding and went back to me. Oh my God. No one believed them. The venue had cameras, but they refused to show me the recordings as they were for security purposes only. But some people filmed parts of it. Watching my parents and sisters get ripped apart by any and everyone that came out to check the drama was delicious. After years and years of being accused of stuff and not believed, to watch them have a taste of one of the best wedding gifts, my mother was crying. My dad kept changing from purple to white. My sister was still on the floor crying and screaming. They kept insisting that my husband was in on it, but people kept asking why my husband would agree, why there was no proof, why did they want my sister to do this at my wedding, and they had no good answers to any of it. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they were told to leave and had no choice but to do so. My dad apparently had to drag my sister as she refused to leave the ground. Again, people said nothing to me all night. I guess they wanted to spare me. Aww. Well, maybe it's because I was the bride and not just a guest for once. But it did feel like everyone is making an extra effort to be nice, positive, and excited about everything. My husband says all the expensive shit they're eating and drinking certainly helps. lol we had a blast my husband maintained the forced angry face for only a short while before breaking out in smiles again after what we went after that we went to the hotel to catch some sleep before going on our honeymoon speaking of which my parents did try to play pay for our plane tickets but we thought it was risky as they could try and cancel them or something if we refused Mm. of course since the whole thing The three have tried to contact me. I've refused calls because my husband insisted on keeping a paper trail. A smart thing because my sister did eventually message me. I won't repeat it as it was very unhinged and didn't make much sense. But the important was that she blamed me for her humiliation. Called my husband a two-faced snake that fooled them for months. (laughs) He wants to print that and put it on her wall. (laughs) (laughs) And hope that I would get cheated on by him. She did also suggest he was cheating on me with her, actually. My husband took my phone, screenshots the call logs, screenshots my sister's messages, screenshots some of the messages of my parents demanding I pick up the phone and sent it to all my family group chat. I s- and sent screenshots of the messages to him where they called him names and threatened him, but he kept the, you're delusional, I never agreed to anything, and even threatened to sue them for defamation and harassment. Oh he my wrote God. a message in the group chat begging my family for help as I was now being harassed by them constantly. He begged my family to help stop them from trying to ruin my honeymoon now that they have failed to ruin my wedding. They finished neatly with a request that they don't share our locations to avoid my parents sending my sister over and then claiming he had somehow agreed to pretend to fuck her in our honeymoon suite. My family assured him they would take care of it. And indeed, since we had, we've had silence. And husband is now a little disappointed my sister didn't disobey so he could... tattle again and tear her a new asshole (laughs) we'll see if it lasts all in all while i obviously would have preferred having a normal loving family at my wedding at least for once in my life they not only failed to ruin something meaningful to me but i got them back is that all that's it oh my god it was long but worth it that was the best revenge story i've ever heard Mm -hmm. oh my god like truthfully so deserved exactly so deserved like 100%. i just feel so satisfied right now <laughs> yeah the, the first half of the story was more details about how terrible her childhood was but it was just too long to read all of that as well yeah no that was like 20 minutes not longer <laughs> yeah yeah no the, the that was like half the story too she spent a long time in the beginning there wow. was um one edit uh one edit to it said did they ever think this would work question mark 
My husband and I talked, and we have a theory that they never wanted to do this at all. We think my sister threw a tantrum over me getting married first when she barely gets dates. And they gave my husband that outlandish proposition, as in they didn't want to pay for my wedding and didn't think we'd accept and that it even looked good on them to do it. But by suggesting it and being refused, they could look like the good guys to my sister while having an excuse to not give me a dime. But then my husband accepted it and they couldn't backtrack or else risk turning my sister on them. Hmm. I think so. Well, that family needs therapy. That family sucks. Yep. Sucks so bad more than anyone that I've ever heard. Right? (laughs) Wow. No, that... To be plotting and scheming for months? Like, I don't understand why they would think the husband would go along with it. They're so delusional. There's, that's, that's so, so messed delusional. up. That's so messed up. First, you you treat your older child like the golden child her whole life. You believe her in everything. You don't treat your younger sibling equally. You pay for the university for the older sibling to go to and then say that the younger sibling will have to go work for a couple of years and will have to start paying bills right away. Uh, so then she gets a scholarship and moves out and does it on her own. And then older sister just fails and drops out and doesn't have to pay any rent when she comes back to live at home. Just treating her like terribly her whole life. It's very sad, honestly. It's very sad. I'm very happy she got some kind of revenge because that, that's very sad that she was treated that way her whole yeah. life. Yeah, and I know you mentioned that she said that she wasn't planned. So it's like people shouldn't be allowed to have kids. Like... I just feel like if you know you don't want to have the kid, there are other options. Like, don't raise it to to treat her like a... Yeah, so apparently they were trying for a long time, and the older sister was like a miracle child. And they didn't expect to get pregnant again so quickly uh, right after. So even though they didn't want it, they... Or her, sorry, I keep saying it. Even though they didn't want her... They kept her because... Yeah, and apparently just resented her. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. People don't have kids if you don't want them. Yeah, I would would cut that family from my life. A hundred percent. They're done. They would be done. It seemed like she tried to do that. She moved away. She went to college in a different state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that she did let them back in her life for this to all... Like, for this to happen, but... uh, Mm -hmm. Wow, best story ever. I don't know yeah, how I'm gonna that top was that. <laughs> so so juicy. I was like I read the whole thing. I read all of her backstory and everything, and I was just like, this is incredible. That's the greatest revenge wedding story yeah. that I've ever heard. For real. Okay, let's move on because okay. we have a lot more stories. Okay. This one comes from Best of Redditor Updates again, but it was originally posted on Emma the Asshole uh two months ago. Am I the asshole for refusing to attend my best friend's wedding? I, 28 female, am entangled in a wedding drama of epic proportions. My recently engaged best friend, 29 female, asked me to be her maid of honor and words can't describe how happy I was. We've been inseparable since kindergarten and I was ready to make her big day unforgettable. I spent nearly $700 on her bachelorette party, buying cute outfits for everyone and renting a party bus with all you can drink drinks. The other girls pitched in, but I'm most financially stable, so majority fell on me. I helped plan the wedding of her dreams, right down to the contacting the vendors and setting dates, which she was too busy. I made the the save the date and invitation cards. What I'm trying to say is, I did a lot for her. And then, two weeks before the wedding, my best friend asked me to step down and said that her future sister in law would be taking the role of maid of honor. I was pissed. And we got into a huge argument over it. This is where I admittedly said things I wasn't proud of. Since then, I've received texts from our friends, best friends, family, the groom's family, and even sister-in-law telling me that I'm a drama queen who needs to get over herself and that it isn't about me. This has really gotten to me and I need to know, was I in the wrong? No. What? No? The heck? Yeah. Like, to be revoked maid of honor... Who does that to someone? Who makes somebody a maid of honor and then says, uh, no, you're no longer my maid of honor because my sister-in-law that I haven't known for nearly as long and I'm only forced to know uh, is going to be taking over. 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't say... Like, she didn't get into the details of the nasty things she may have said to her friend. But, I mean, it, it, it's warranted to be upset with the bride, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so there is an edit. Thank you to everyone who's been commenting and giving me advice. I'm going to wait a week to let emotions cool and then try to have a sit down with my friend to talk about this. I'll be logging off for now because I'm going to make a huge batch of cookies and watch some TV to relax. Cookies. Edit three. Sorry, the first one was like grammar mistakes. Edit three. A small update and to answer some questions. I asked for $200 of the money back because $500 was a repayment from when she paid my rent in college for a month. I hadn't paid her back sooner because she requested I use it for her bachelorette. She's been dating her fiance for eight years and we're waiting to be more financially stable and we're waiting to be more financially stable before getting married. On to the update. I called her this morning and asked to talk. She agreed and we set up a meeting on Thursday at a local coffee shop. I'm a bit concerned because she sounded really shy and nervous on the phone. Hopefully that all goes well and I can do an official update with happy news. Thank you so much for the advice and comments. Okay, some relevant comments. Um, it doesn't show the whole comment because this is the best of Redditor updates, but um, someone commented asking for money back. And OP replied, I tried asking for some of the money back, but she called me money hungry and said I never told her it was conditional. Someone else wrote, have you talked to sister-in-law? OP, once or twice before this went down, she has been texting and calling me to tell me what a self-centered jerk I am, but I haven't replied. Did she give you a reason for why she asked you to step down? Sister-in-law is an introvert and might never get to be a maid of honor. I have a large friend group and might be a maid of honor at one of their weddings. That's bullshit. What a shitty excuse. That's bullshit. Like, to... Uh, <sighs> I hate when people baby other people. Yeah. Because, oh, she's not going to be a maid of honor ever. Who cares? That's not your problem. That's that's probably due to her shitty personality. Exactly. She might not have any friends. She might not be socially integrated with other people or other groups where she's not going to be chosen as a mother-in-law. That's not your problem. That makes me so angry. Yeah, that's not, no, no. Is she close to sister-in-law? She isn't particularly close to sister-in-law and even would complain about her at times. Sister-in-law is the youngest member of the near of a nearby extended family. She's 18. I don't know if that changes things for my friend, but my friend felt like sister-in-law was coddled. Could there be something going on behind the scenes? I didn't consider behind the scenes abuse. From what I've seen of the fiance, he was very kind and sweet and treats her right, but I don't know much about his family. I want to talk to my friend once emotions settle a bit. A few people have mentioned the groom's family pressuring her, and I think it's likely. I thought it was extremely out of character, but one person says she might be feeling pressure to conform to the family since she wants them to like her. I'm not sure what the actual reason behind her actions are, but hopefully I can sit down with her as soon and talk about it. One more thought from OP. She paid for the base dress and I was going to pay for alterations. I don't want to expose her online because we've been friends for over 20 years and I don't want to hurt her like that. I'm still hoping we can be friends. It does make me feel better that so many people are on my side, even if it's just on Reddit. I was generally starting to feel like I was going crazy. No, everybody's on your side. Yeah. That's so rude. Okay, so after this, OP was voted not the asshole. Good. But then there is another update. Sweet. Hi, everyone. This is an update from my previous post, which can be found on my profile. First, I just want to thank everyone again for how kind and supportive you have all been, but also how honest. I took everything to heart and everyone's advice was great. Now on to the update. I met my friend at around 9 a.m. yesterday at a local coffee shop. She looked really bad. Her hair was super greasy and unkempt. She also had really bad eye bags and she seemed totally exhausted. When I asked her what was wrong, she just apologized. I kept prodding and it turns out that her in-laws are real pieces of work. Apparently, they've been harassing her for nearly three years about having sister-in-law as a maid of honor at the wedding. And when my friend chose me, they went ballistic. My friend says she thought she'd be able to handle it until the wedding day. But then mother-in-law threatened to ruin her wedding unless sister-in-law was maid of honor. My friend panicked and that's when she told me I would no longer be maid of honor. She apologized for the money-hungry comment and said that she was just in such an awful place mentally that hearing me mention the money made her really upset. 
The reason all of our friends were attacking me is because they knew about mother-in-law situation, as my friend never mentioned it to me because she didn't want me to step down because of mother-in-law, and they thought I also knew the whole story. And as for the fiancé, he was completely in the dark. He doesn't have a good relationship with his mother already, and my friend didn't want to be what destroyed that relationship. When my friend told me all of this, I felt awful. I didn't know she was enduring three years of harassment because of me. I immediately apologized, and she apologized, and we both cried a lot. When the tears stopped, she pulled out an envelope with $200 and gave it to me. I originally refused, but she insisted, she, so I took it. I encouraged her to tell her fiancé because keeping this from him wasn't helping anyone, and if he decided to cut off mother-in-law, then that was his decision, not hers. After talking a lot more about future boundaries, our friendship, and the wedding, I decided I would go to the wedding and we'd still be friends. I know my friend didn't handle this in the best way, but I've known her for over two decades and she's practically my platonic soulmate. That's not something you should throw away because of this. Originally, this was how my update ended, but as I was typing this, I received a text from my friend saying that fiancé disinvited his mom and practically half the family, including sister-in-law, because of their treatment of my friend and me. She asked if I would be willing to be maid of honor again, and I said yes. I wanted to give a final thank you to Reddit for helping me through this, and I hope all of you have a nice night. Wow, full circle. That's kind of yes. heartwarming that it came back around. But Yeah, love that ending. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to communication. Like, every relationship comes down to communication. Like, Yeah, I know a lot of people keep things from their people, their loved ones for their sake. They think they're, you know, they don't want to rough the waters but as long as you have the full information people can make decisions for themselves you gotta let them make the decisions for themselves like her not wanting to tell the fiance about the mother-in-law like that wasn't right and then look at the ripple effects from that one decision exactly of everything that has happened because you made that decision like you're ruining your lifelong friendship yeah this was three years in the process exactly so yeah, it could have been like she's probably had so much stress and anxiety for three years because of mother in law threatening her. Like, in laws are nasty. It, we should they do an in laws episode. We should do an in laws episode. Those are juicy. Maybe that'll be the next one, but yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, I I feel sorry for her um, because she was obviously pressured. And I get, I get wanting to, you know, do the right thing and keep mm-hmm. the information from the from the fiance so that he can keep a better relationship with the mother but it's not your responsibility yeah exactly not your responsibility at all she's taking that burden i'd be like anxiety uh, on herself exactly and some people do like the opposite like like you know i have an estranged relationship with my mother like we haven't talked in almost a decade and that would be like you taking it upon yourself to reach out to her and try and bridge that gap for me. Yeah. Like that's not your position. Exactly. Like you're there Sometimes to support me. People think that they know what's best for other people. And you don't. And that's not the case. You, it shouldn't be. You don't make that decision. Yeah. You let them decide. You give them all the information and you let them decide what's uh, best for them. Exactly. All right. Okay. Moving along. This one, uh, this one is a true off my chest story. So this one was posted nine days ago, 13,000 upvotes. So it's pretty decent. My soon-to-be ex-husband humiliated me on our wedding day and met his karma instantly. I love another karma one. Karma, karma, karma. <laughs> it has been two days since my wedding day. I had already been with him for four years, one of which I was engaged. It all started a few months earlier when I noticed my husband, Jake, watching prank videos. Among other things, these videos showed embarrassing photos of the bride being played on a projector in front of the whole room or the bride's face being smashed into the cake. Teresa's is giving me a death stare right now because mm-hmm. I have a secret folder of embarrassing photos of Teresa eating food. <laughs> And I'd love to show them at our wedding, but I think after this, I don't think I'll be doing anything. <laughs> you didn't have a choice to do that anyways. No, I didn't have an actually. No. I didn't have any actual real plans for that. No, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big prank person. Okay. I told him straight away that I didn't want anything like that at our wedding. He just laughed and said that he wasn't planning anything like that. I thought that was the end of it, but I kept catching him making strange arrangements with his friends. He suddenly wanted to choose the wedding photographer and the cake. I thought nothing of it and was just glad that he was helping me with the wedding preparations. 
Nevertheless, I reminded him the day before that if he did something like that, I would break up with him immediately. And when the day of the wedding came, everything went smoothly until the ceremony. Until the moment came, oh, yeah, until the moment came when the cake was to be cut. The whole room watched us as I made the first cut and the photographer stood in front of us and the camera in hand. Suddenly, I felt a hand on the back of my head pushing my face first into the cake. Not only did my makeup, but my whole wedding dress was ruined and the whole room laughed. My husband the loudest. <gasps> At that moment, the photographer took the photo and Jake th said that this was now our wedding photo. I turned around, slapped him in the face and ran out of the room in tears. Thank God karma didn't take long to arrive and came in the form of his own brother. I ran to the toilet and started crying when I suddenly heard loud shouting in the hall. It was his brother Frank. I could barely understand what he was saying, and when I left the toilet, he was waiting for me. He told me that Jake had something to tell me. Jake was shaking and apologized without looking me in the eye. Frank told him to look me in the eye and apologize again. Even I was a bit scared of Frank at that moment <laughs> because I'd always thought of him as a kind and gentle man. I had never seen him angry before. Jake apologized again, and then Frank led us back into the hall, which was suddenly very quiet, and most of our families looked down at the floor a little embarrassed. The festivities were cut short, and I was taken home by Frank because I was too angry with my husband and didn't want to see him. During the ride, Frank apologized for blowing up like that. He explained that my husband was horrible even back when he was a brother and used every special occasion to humiliate Frank. When it was Frank's birthday, my husband would throw his cake at him and break his presents. Back then, their parents brushed it off by saying that that's just how brothers behave. So he had to endure every humiliation, but when he saw my husband bury my face in that cake, he was fed up because he realized that my husband was just a bad person who got his satisfaction from humiliating others. Mm. I asked Frank if he thought it would be an exaggeration if I separated from my husband. He said no, because according to him, I deserve better. And he didn't care about how his brother felt about it because he had brought it upon himself. He then told me that if I needed help collecting my things, he would help me and gave me his number. And I did decide to separate from him and file for divorce. I informed Jake and my family about it. Jake told me not to uh, not to do that because it was just a harmless prank. I was spammed by both his family and mine that it might be ridiculous to end our marriage over this. But I see it differently. If he does something like this to me, despite multiple requests not to do it, even after promising me he wouldn't do it, then I can't trust him. Mm -hmm. No matter what he promises, I have to assume that the opposite can and will happen and that he doesn't care at all about how I feel about his decisions. This situation can be projected onto so many worse situations that it would be important for me to be able to entrust him. His brother Frank seemed to be the only one who supports me now, and I will go through with the divorce. Call me humorless. Call me what you want, but I have given my reasons. You know what the best revenge would be? She should marry Frank. <laughs> no, I see that. That's funny. This makes me so angry because jokesters, pranksters, whatever, who make that their entire personality are literally so embarrassing and disgusting like it gives me the biggest ick if that's your entire personality pranking people aren't you embarrassed that's so icky it's like you have nothing else going for you like it's one thing if your partner also likes to prank people and you guys are both game for it sure no problem but when some person tells you that they do not want you to do something and then you do it. That is not a prank. That is breaking trust. Exactly. You have told me several times that you do not want wedding cake in your face on your wedding day. And even if you didn't tell me that, I would never have done that. Because what girl wants to do all of their makeup, look beautiful, do all of their wedding day stuff to get wedding cake in their face? I don't understand how that's even a thing. That's the stupidest thing I have ever heard of. No. Now, would I potentially like to have a slideshow of Teresa? Not embarrassing photos, but like older photos of Teresa from when she was a kid growing up. And, you know, maybe she thinks they're embarrassing because she's got braces or something like that. I think that would be cute at the wedding of like, you know, our lives and now we're together and stuff. And then some of our like lightly funnier pictures. That's not what you mentioned pictures. before, though. 
You've mentioned I, embarrassing videos. Well, maybe. I think no. that's kind of funny. But I understand that. any slideshow. And I understand that you don't find that funny. So I'm not. I'm not planning nothing secret. Have you learned nothing from the story? I have. I just said I'm never going to do anything secret. I'm not going to pull any pranks or do anything without your permission. I'm upset. Well, you can trust me. I'm not. You, 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 I would never do that to you. You have told me not to do it. Now, that is now a no-go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you can trust me because we have trust. And do we? we have communication. <laughs> yeah, no, this is... Uh... This makes me so upset. Uh, and I'm glad Frank stood up for her. Good job, Frank. He, he's been in the same boat as her. And yeah, I like when he said he realized that the brother is just a shitty human being. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that they were just kids. They were just, that's what brothers do I to each other. I hate parents like that too. Me too. Oh, that's enabling just the way their boys behavior. are. This is yeah. enabling and like not doing, not doing anything about it. I've got a nice uh, family drama story. We're going to do an episode in the future for family drama. I've got a nice one waiting there about kids sticking up for themselves against other kids and parents being mad i'm Slayer. excited okay there is an update to the story many of you asked for an update so here it is many of you pointed out that i could get an annulment don't ask me why i didn't think of this earlier but after you guys pointed it out i plan on doing that haven't done it yet but it will happen the next few weeks it will probably be much easier than a divorce with that being said what happened now so a day after I wrote the original post, I went to Jake's apartment to get my stuff. I slept over at my best friend's house in the meanwhile, and of course, I also took up Frank's offer to help me get my stuff. When we arrived, he pleaded with me that it was just a prank and he didn't mean to hurt me. The only thing I could think about was how he broke my trust before and how I couldn't trust him now if he told me he didn't mean to hurt me. When he saw Frank, his face turned red and he yelled at Frank and accused him of poisoning him against me. Don't worry, Jake. You did that yourself. <laughs> he argued with Frank for a while, and Frank confronted him about everything he did during his childhood. He told Frank to grow a pair and that he should forget about what happened back then. Ironic when he's the one who never changed and is just as bad as before. He constantly tried to talk to me, but Frank stood in his way and talked over him. When we left, I saw how he angrily smashed the door. Apparently, he now spreaded lies to his family that Frank tried to steal him from me. Luckily, I was able to see who he really was before it was too late. What a coincidence that after this incident, my family spammed me with messages as well about how we should talk to a therapist instead of breaking up over this. They only stopped when I threatened to cut them off too. I also didn't plan to share this with you, but so many people suggested it that I thought I could at least ask him so that after we got my stuff, I asked Frank, but he rejected me, telling me that he was already dating someone. I just wanted to tell you so you can <laughs> stop asking. <laughs> that would have been Teresa's comment too. Or it was. <laughs> but honestly, I'm also kind of glad that this was his answer because it means he didn't help me because there was malicious intent behind it, but more because he was simply a good person. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I told him about my post here and Frank told me he read many of your comments. He said he likes your comments and that you made his day. I thought you might want to know this. This is probably the first and last update of this. I just want to get this behind me and look forward, but thank you all for the support. I'm sad Frank is taken. <laughs> Frank's a good guy. I don't think she should guy. have asked him out, but why? Just time to move on. You don't move on out of a wedding by going on a date with somebody right away, especially I... the brother. No, mm, I disagree. I think it's fine. You literally just had a wedding, had a huge blow up. I don't think the first thing you need to be doing is going on a date with somebody else. Well, I think you need some time fun. to yourself. It could no. be fun. You need time for yourself, I believe. Maybe. Well, yeah. Okay. Any other comments or should we move on? No, let's just move on. All right. This one comes from Am I in the Wrong? No, sorry. Am I Wrong? Am I Wrong for Calling Off My Wedding After My Sister-in-Law Shaved My Beard? Whoa. My 28 male fiance, 25 female, who will call Lexi, are a happy couple of six years and engaged for one or so I thought. For context, my fiance sister, 32 female, will call her Sally, has always been hostile towards me and would rarely speak to me, and when she did, it would be because her parents were around. Sally is Lexi's rock because she has she got her through a tough time during college, and since then, Lexi has told Sally everything about everything. We've had problems with this in the past due to her telling Sally personal things about my childhood I'd only told a few people. 
which led to us not speaking for three months during COVID when she'd only leave our room for food and to go to the toilet. And recently we hadn't had an argument in a year plus until three nights ago. She mentioned that she'd like to shave my beard. For context, I have a very thick beard and I've been growing for eight years and I'm very proud of. So of course I told Lexi I wouldn't be shaving my beard, to which she stormed off to the kitchen and slammed her wine glass into the sink, smashing it and a plate in the process. I immediately stood, stood up and asked her what the fuck she was doing, and then she spun around and screamed that I'm a selfish asshole because I won't shave my beard and ran out to the bedroom and slammed the door. I ended up sleeping on the couch and woke up at around 4 a.m. to Sally with a razor trying to shave my beard, so I pushed her off me. Lexi then ran to check Sally whilst I was looking at the big patch Sally had taken out of my beard. Then I went upstairs and packed a bag whilst Lexi shouted at me for hurting Sally. I told her to F off and the wedding was off and walked out of the house and drove an hour to my parents' house where I've been staying since the incident. Earlier today, I got a text from Sally saying I was selfish for not shaving my beard because when I go down on Lexi, it feels weird and I haven't replied to her. My family thinks I should break off the relationship, but her family said I should just shave it all and move on. So what should I do? And am I wrong? Well, who shaves somebody? Oh, my God. Um, okay. First off, if it is something that you would like you're supposed to do, that's a conversation that you have. That's yeah. an ask. That's you explain. This is why I'm asking you. What if he just went up to her and was like, hey. I want you to get a buzz cut. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't like your long hair anymore. Or can you do the where the buzz on the side of and the hair comes over or the short hair and then you wake up in the middle of the night and your hair is getting cut off? How do you think you're gonna feel? Exactly. Mm -mm, not gonna be you're not gonna be happy. So that's that's unacceptable behavior, toxic behavior. The fact that you're doing it when they used to sleep after he said no, yeah, hundred percent. I'd be calling off the wedding too. That's uh -huh. breaking trust. That's once again, you're not trusting the person. You're gonna fear you're gonna wake up every night and your beard's gonna be gone. Like you've been growing it for a long time. It's your part of your personality. You're very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna shave it off like that. I you know what? Best revenge for this guy. I would come back home for one night and she would wake up to the middle of the night across her head and be like, Oh, you wanna still keep the wedding on? How do you feel? How do you feel now that your hair is missing? Hmm? You think I want to get married like this? You want to get married like that? Yeah, well, I think, honestly, they should have called off the wedding even before the sister tried to shave the beard. Like, her reaction to that... Yeah, that's a red flag, breaking too. Breaking a plea, breaking a glass, like, because she, she was so angry he wasn't she, willing to shave the beard. And she didn't even explain why. Yeah. It's like, listen, this is, this is why I want it. Nope, I'm just going to go smash the glass. No matter... Even if she explained why and she didn't get her way, like somebody who smashes and breaks things as a reaction to being mad is a big red flag that yeah, I wouldn't trust. Exactly. The next thing you know, they're stabbing you while you sleep. Okay. <laughs> well. It's leading up to it. Yeah. Okay. So there's a couple edits. People who break things when they're angry is unacceptable. There's no reason no, for I you agree. to lose your stuff and break things when you get angry. I agree. I mean, fully. There's no acceptance for that. No yeah. excuse. You can't you can't trust a person like that because they're How can you feel safe around them? They're unhinged. You don't know they're what they're gonna do. Wild. Loose okay. cannons. Okay. Edit. I don't know how many will see my other posts, so I'll put it here as well. I've now got as of typing ninety nine plus text slash calls from Lexi saying things like, Don't leave, let's have sex one more time. What the and I'm pregnant. What the fuck? She's trying to baby trap me, I think. Oh my god. I'm let's already pregnant, psycho. but let's have sex one more time. This girl sounds psycho. psycho. Sounds like she definitely wants to baby trap you. Yeah. Edit two. Lexi messaged me weird things. Miss me. And I'll take the baby too. Sally then messaged me saying Lexi is in the hospital after being treated for a suicide attempt. I don't believe it at all. I've blocked Sally's number now. Oh, my God. I call Another edit. I called the police and showed evidence of her suicidal message, so she hopefully will be getting checked into an institution. At a four, Lexi's aunt, who is the only person on her side that on her side that agrees with me, just called me to tell me Lexi has checked into a psychiatric unit for two weeks. I'll keep y'all updated if anything happens, but I should be okay for now. At a five, I just want to say thank you for the overwhelming amounts of support. I filed a police report on Sally for assault, and I'm in the process of canceling the wedding venue. Edit six. I'm back at the house. 
I've got a locksmith changed for locks just in case. The wedding venue can't be refunded, but it was going to be paid by your parents anyway, so I don't care. I've also contacted my lawyers. This is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. So much more stuff just came out of that over the beard. This He's happy that they did this before the wedding and not after the wedding. Mm-hmm. This dude did not know what he was signing up for. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't read the edits. I should have uh, had a trigger warning for suicide. Talks of suicide. Talks of suicide. Um, but yeah, I'm glad she's getting help because I think she, there is, like all jokes aside, I think there is actually something mentally wrong with her. Oh, for sure. Maybe bipolar. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but for her to have like that much anger and the just the weird text messages saying like, don't leave, let's have sex one more time and I'm pregnant, like... She definitely needs help mentally. So I'm glad she's getting the help that she needs. I agree. Oh, that was Luna. <laughs> Hi, Luna. <laughs> All right, let's move on. My turn. Uh, couple has pop-up wedding at local coffee shop. This one was under Untitled People. The story says it all. Basically, the couple decided that their bridal slash wedding party and guests to go to the local coffee shop and the workers slash management thought... It was there before wedding coffee. Quick in and out. Nope. The party started to move things around and ask workers to take their personal items like coats and to set up for their actual wedding in the place. Oh. The couple had not asked for permission to do so and held up the business for over 20 minutes, which meant regular and normal customers could not get a coffee and get on with their day, nor could anyone in the parking lot get out because of how the cars were parked valet style and cut off cut off the area the bride did offer a 200 hundred dollar donation but the business sent them a 500 hundred dollar bill for private use of their party and there's a whole news article behind it oh my gosh some people are crazy and entitled who does that that's so crazy what if they what how... <laughs> oh my gosh how are you gonna invite a bunch of guests saying it's at this coffee shop without letting the coffee shop know before right? like so many things could have gone wrong what if they were closed that day? Like small coffee shops, they usually like have their own. If they're not like a franchise, sometimes they make their own hours, you know, like the, right? you could be sending all of your guests to this coffee shop that could be closed or short staffed or like just not able to accommodate your wedding. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's insane. Some people are entitled. Yeah. Okay. I got another one. That one was so short. This one's kind of short, too. But I kind of want to... Oh, it's been deleted. I hate when they've been deleted. I just found this yesterday. The title was, Am I the asshole for not caring that my fiancé decided to keep her name? Basically, the fiancé started practicing the new signature with her name. And he's like, oh, you're going to take my name? His mom never took her his dad's name? Wait, I read this one. Okay. So then, then you know. Uh, basically, she, uh, she got upset because he told her that he didn't care if she took... Uh, his last name, and she was upset that he didn't want to claim her. Yeah, so I read that one, um, but it was the way he said it. Like, he was like, oh, I don't care. Like, she was very excited, like, practicing his name and stuff. Exactly. If and she shows excitement for it, then you should be excited for it. You should be matching her energy. Matching the like, energy. It is There's ultimately a- up to her. So. Yeah, that's her choice. There's a lot of things that you do that I'm not in love with, but I got to match your energy. I want to make sure that you're having a good time. We're going to sing Taylor Swift together. You think I want to sing Taylor Swift together? No, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I think I sound stupid, but you you love it. So I do that for you. It's it's all about matching your partner and being a good partner. When you see that they're excited about something, like you be excited with them and for them and stuff. You don't want to scream all too well, 10 minute version at the top of your lungs with me. You don't have fun doing that. I want to do it for you oh okay that's sweet <laughs> okay okay no no it's still my turn uh, what do you mean you just... i didn't even really get one yet you got two no i got a juicy one i got a juicy one here <laughs> denver's taking over this episode am i the asshole for not wanting my boyfriend to attend his friend's wedding without me me 27 female and my boyfriend 29 male have been dating for five years and living together for four My family owns a small vacation property in a mountain town across the country where I spent a lot of time growing up and still travel to yearly. 
He usually doesn't come with me anymore due to his desire to spend his limited PTO and funds on exploring new destinations. His very close friend and friend's now wife were recently engaged and just got officially married in a small courthouse ceremony. A few months ago, the couple asked if they could stay at my family's place for a week while they have an unofficial ceremony and wedding photos taken. I agreed immediately because I genuinely liked the couple and was excited that they wanted to do that in a place that I love so much. I went through a lot of work negotiating with my family to secure the property for them due to the fact that it is rented out most of the season to pay for the upkeep expenses. I was able to secure the couple a week that they wanted at no cost. They immediately let us know that they wanted the ceremony to be as small as possible. Only one witness on each side. I believe it was meant to be each other's fathers and that they would not be coming and that we would not be coming on the trip. We were completely fine with this, especially since we already had other long slash expensive trips tentatively planned for the upcoming year and flying to the mountain town takes several hours and is not cheap. Here is where the issue comes in. Last week, my boyfriend came home from dinner with his friend and said that the father could no longer come and the friend asked my boyfriend to be his witness instead. I thought this was great until he continued to tell me that the couple still does not want me to come. I told him that is fine and I can just stay on the property that day while they enjoy their wedding activities, to which he clarified, no, they don't want you to come on the trip at all. My first reaction was absolutely not, but then I felt bad because I know he really wants to be there for his friend. I want him to be there for his friend too, but I feel really weird about the whole thing. I don't think I would feel this way if it was somewhere else or they didn't take away from my time and money that we plan to use to travel somewhere together. He understands my feelings on the whole situation, but what doesn't want to let his friend down. I've asked for the honest opinions from a few friends and parents to make sure I'm not blowing this all out of proportion. Everyone seems to agree with me, and my parents were so mad they wanted to pull the plug on the entire stay. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wouldn't let that happen. I obviously can't force him to not go, but would I be wrong at asking him to turn down the trip? This girl seems very reasonable. She's more reasonable than I am because I would have said no. Like, you're not even going to have the wedding on my property without me being invited like yeah i feel dis. i feel disrespected for her yeah how dare is... you ask for the vacation property and then doesn't even give her an invite who gave them the stay for free yeah uh, okay i get that she already had plans going elsewhere and that she's fine with that i wouldn't be fine with that i but... wouldn't be i'd be like go book it somewhere else go pay somewhere else yeah there's two assholes here though the friend and the the husband for leaving her I would never leave you. Because I would never agree to you, go somewhere without you, when, especially when it was your place and you wanted to come. I would never agree to go there without you. Exactly. Like, you should have your partners back. I, I get best friends are there and they are uh, an important part of your life as well. Your partner should be your best friend. Exactly. Exactly. No. <laughs> um. But, yeah, he should definitely be having his fiance's or, uh, sorry, is it a wife, husband, uh, girlfriend? What is it? Do you know? Uh, boyfriend. Okay, boyfriend. So he should definitely have his girlfriends back on this because, yeah, sorry, just kindly say I will not be attending unless my girlfriend is there, which is not much. Like, one more person, and she said she doesn't even have to attend the ceremony. And they're like, we don't even what? want you anywhere near us. It's what like, is the big okay. deal? Okay. near near After, like, she uh, said I won't be in the ceremony, I'll just be in the house you know and they still, still said we don't even want you on the trip no like, your trip's canceled you, yeah you've lost my respect i don't want to do this for you no anymore. exactly exactly i owe I'm you doing nothing. you a favor i owe you nothing I'm, I'm literally doing you a favor yeah you guys are so disrespectful wow get the f out yeah mm. me yep moving okay. along all right moving along okay am i the asshole for not wanting my mother-in-law to get married on my daughter's birthday my daughter was born september 20th 2022 my mother-in-law got engaged recently and her anniversary is September 20, 2021. She wants to have her wedding on September 20th, 2025, which would be my daughter's third birthday. I don't really like the idea of it considering we wouldn't be able to celebrate her third birthday on the actual day. 
and going forward, her anniversary will be the same day, and I feel like she would rather celebrate that instead. We also go to Disney World for my daughter's birthday, so we aren't typically even in the same state during that time. Mother-in-law knows this. I don't know if she if I should say something. She did text me saying, I hope you're okay with me choosing the wedding date for September 20th, and I want to say something back, but not sure if I should. Please be honest, but be nice. LOL. Thanks for your opinions. What? Is that, is that entitled or what? I don't know. Like, okay. There'd be one thing if, like, there was this super hard venue to get. And that was the only day available for five years or something. And outrageous. But, like, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Wait. And, but then after that, you, you, the anniversary is going to be the same day as the kid's wedding. So I feel like that's so no, wrong. No, no, no. The kid's birthday. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. The mom's wedding anniversary is going to be the same day as the kid's birthday. So wait, you're on the mother-in-law side? No. No, oh. no, no. I'm saying the only way that, that I could think that would be even remotely acceptable is if the venue that she was trying to get for some reason, that was the only day available and that was her absolute dream wedding. But I mean, it's the mother-in-law, so this is probably already her like, second wedding or something like that. I don't know. And where's the husband's side in this? See, I How did the husband even let this happen. I disagree. You disagree? I'm on the mother in law side. Really? It's a birthday. Like, and the anniversaries don't need to be spent with the kids. When is, like, I don't celebrate my parents' anniversary with them. I guess. I don't think it's an issue at all. I, I kind of think it's an issue. I feel like, yeah, I, I was like confused why you're so. Okay, well, we, ha- we haven't had a difference of opinion yet. Our first yeah i mean talk first the kid's only three so the birthday's not that important but it's just like it's a day where you usually go to that person's house to celebrate the birthday they're always gonna have a birthday party and stuff yeah and that's now, fine and now you're having a wedding i guess the anniversary one isn't isn't too big because you no. don't you don't have a party like it's one year to yeah. miss a, th- a three-year-old's birthday that they're not even gonna remember yeah, I mean, a three-year-old isn't going to remember that birthday Exactly. Party. So I don't think it... And it's their anniversary, too. Sorry. it uh, Her anniversary was September 20th, 2021. And the daughter was born September 20th, 2022. So their anniversary came first. So that date is also significant for mother-in-law. Anniversary? But I thought the wedding already happened. Or no, has it, wedding, hasn't happened. wedding is happening in 2025. For their anniversary? Yeah, like so the, the reason, wedding day on the same day. Yes, that's understandable. Exactly. Yeah, I, that's understandable. So overall vote is asshole. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. So there is an edit. Um, this is my first time ever posting, and I realize I should have more details. My husband does feel the exact same way as I do. This is her second wedding. She had an affair and cheated on my husband's father with the person she is now engaged to. Ooh. So she is now marrying her affair partner. I didn't even realize their anniversary date is September 20th until a week ago. So basically her anniversary date is the day her affair started. (laughs) Since she was sneaking around with this guy, she never announced an anniversary date until just now. Also, when I was, when I said we typically go to Disney world for her birthday every week, every year, I meant we go the same week in September every year and have done so since 2018, except for 2022 because I was giving birth. LOL. My daughter just happened to be born the same time. Thanks for everyone for your input. Okay, that's messed up. I don't know. There's a lot of family drama, a lot of resentment here. They don't want to give anything Mother of Ways Law because she cheated and stuff like that. Also, who goes to Disney World every year? That's very expensive. They must be rich. And like their kid doesn't even want to enjoy it. They're going for no, them. They were going before the kid yeah, was Yeah, they're born. going for them. Going for who them? loves Disney World that much? Disney they go adults are a thing. What? <laughs> What you go? You never heard heard the Disney adults? No, I will go. I went once when I was a kid, and I can see myself going once again, uh, maybe twice again, maybe once for us because we've never been. Mm -hmm. If you want to go, I have no desire. And two, if for some reason we magically have kids in the future and we need to take kids to, I feel like every kid should go to Disney World once. Those are the only two situations. But there's a whole lot of drama to unpack here. Yeah, cheating, scandalous. But okay, so I don't think the cheating is really relevant. Like. It's relevant in the fact that it's skewing or shaping their opinions of mother-in-law and not wanting and being more hateful. Like they, they think that their kid's birthday is the center of their world and mother-in-law, how dare her have a wedding on the same day? Is it that big of a deal? I don't think so. Especially since the kid's three. Yeah. Like, won't, definitely won't remember, but. I also think that OP is, um, she's uh, open. Like, like she said, she didn't. You know, she didn't tell the mother-in-law, no, I'm uncomfortable with you choosing this date. She's asking Reddit, like, 
if it's okay if she tells her. So I think she's. I think like, it's okay to she's tell not her. A super asshole. No, and I think <laughs> it's okay to express your opinion. I, I think yeah. if you're on a rage about how she has no right to do that or anything like that, you could. Uh, that's, that's another thing. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with saying, "Listen, like, uh, you know, this is how I feel about it. Like, you know, it's her birthday, and then the anniversary dates will line up, and then maybe the mother-in-law comes back and says, "Well, this is our anniversary date, and this is why we want to have it." And you know, cheating is never good, but who knows? There's could be more to this story that we don't know on mother-in-law side. Maybe father-in-law was cheating. Maybe he was abusive. Who knows? We don't know 100. percent So I don't want to pass 100 percent blame. Just besides cheating isn't right, but there's multiple reasons for it. But I mean. Yeah, we should have our wedding date on our anniversary date. No. October 15th. No, it wasn't the 15th. It was the 12th. Not the engagement date. Oh. Oh, I should have waited to propose until the 15th. Even though it's not our official anniversary date, <laughs> November 5th. Okay, so Denver and I have uh, have been having this ongoing debate for six over six years now. I think the anniversary date of our anniversary is the day he asked me to be his girlfriend november 5th mm-hmm. 2017 mm-hmm. <laughs> okay i Den- think it's october 15th which is the day of our first date because if Teresa didn't express to me that she needed an official request form filed to be official girlfriend and boyfriend <laughs> i don't think i ever would have asked her to actually be my girlfriend we would have just been dating and then eventually long enough we would have been exclusive and all that stuff but she made it apparent uh, that she needed me yeah. to ask her to be her girlfriend. Well, we had to solidify it in some way. Yeah. I think it's uh, necessary. To, I think, yeah, I think it's I necessary to be point, asked. I was at a point in dating where it, it, it didn't feel necessary. Well, to I me. wasn't. So that's why I feel, that's why I'm accepting. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I feel our anniversary was October 15th and you're November 5th because three weeks later is when I asked you. Denver was my first boyfriend. First and last. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's he's dated many other girls. I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> for my past. Ugh. If I had known I would meet you, I would I would change everything. <laughs> Period. Only right answer. Actually, I wouldn't change anything because if anything changed, then it would have changed me meeting you. So I regret nothing. That's fair, too. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's move along. Okay. One more. I have a good one. I have a good one. Only Uh, one more. uh, Only one more. I have have so many. We're going to have to make a part two episode because I have, I have a lot more. Okay. I have one more and then we'll end it on like a a sub, like a Reddit with like multiple answers and stuff. Okay. Uh, Let me pull this one up. Am I the asshole for only serving water for having a dry wedding? Oh, this one's gold. Am I the asshole for having a dry wedding and serving only water for drinks? Posted 10 months ago, 22,000 upvotes. Coming from odd underscore conversation 5087. Throw away only because I don't want this on my main. Hmm. Okay, so basically my husband and I are getting married later this year. Each of our sides of the family are fairly big. It will be around 100 to 150 people total. My husband and I are paying for this all ourselves, as well as my grandma who said she doesn't care one way or another on the issue. She just loves weddings. We have a lot of kids in our family, so we decided against making it child free, but we did decide to make it dry. So there will be no alcohol of any kind at our wedding. Honestly, this doesn't have anything to do with there being kids, but due to the fact that my fiance and I don't drink, nothing against people who do. It's just not for us and we don't want to. On top of that, we only really drink water. We rarely, if ever, drink soda, and most of the time it's only water and the occasional juice and milk. We don't even drink coffee. So obviously the food, which is a part my grandma is not paying for, is going to be expensive for that many people. We are having our wedding catered, so everyone will have a good choice of food to choose from, but to drink, only water will be provided. We don't have to pay for alcohol or soda, It is just a large added expense when we will just do filtered water for a much cheaper cost. When my family and friends found out about this, they got angry. Some didn't really care, but some were really upset about it, saying that I can't just have an open bar so that I don't have to pay for drinks. We could, but still have to pay for the bartender, and we really just don't want to bother with the alcohol there. Or we should at least have soda because how can we expect everyone to only drink water? The kids will be upset. The wedding will be boring. This is not how weddings work, etc. 
So am I the asshole? I didn't think this would be a problem. It's only water. I mean, most people drink water every day anyway. Should we pay extra to have soda and make the family happy? No. No. What? No. What? Are you for real? Are you for real? I don't you think wanna go to You want to go to a wedding and only drink water? That's totally fine. It's their oh wedding. Oh, my God. No one else has to attend. These like, it's your wedding. I, I don't understand how people are so entitled. If you want fucking Sprite, drink it before the wedding. Drink it after the... Like, you can't just not drink. Are you saying... Night? Remember when we went to Madison's wedding? Yeah. Yeah. How long were we there? I don't know. Like seven hours. Okay. And imagine we only drank water. I think I only drank water. These comments are going to set you straight because this one was voted asshole. That's fine. I stand by my opinion. Mm, mm. Top comment. I know that technically you could be in the right, but here's the thing about weddings. The marriage ceremony is for you and your fiance. The wedding is for everyone you've invited. No. It's an event you're hosting and not providing any drinks other than water makes you a bad host slash hostess. Then don't come. Then don't come. People probably won't. <laughs> that's fine that's completely fine like if you don't like what i have at my wedding don't come you're open to not come no if you're gonna be like that go have your wedding at the courthouse and don't invite anybody that's disrespectful don't invite to your anybody guests. i've been to dry the rest of the call rest of the comment i've been to dry weddings there was a couple that put real thought and effort into designing mocktails themselves themed around their relationship it was delightful and everyone connected to the couple through it another couple had a sparkling cider tower in place of champagne and everyone cheered with cider and flutes when you're hosting an event your job is to take care of your guests just because it follows a marriage ceremony doesn't make it any less than the host of an event. And that means providing more than one drink option, especially non-alcoholic, especially to an event your guests are occurring expenses to extend and bringing gifts to. You the asshole. Honestly, I fully support a dry wedding, but only water as a beverage is a cheap host. I understand dry weddings if there's alcoholics involved and everything like that. I think the mocktails is a great idea, but you cannot expect to have a wedding you think anybody in your family would ever go to a wedding without coffee or tea? You think anybody in your Italian side of the wedding would go to a, an event, a, a wedding that doesn't serve coffee or tea? I truly don't think it would change their decision. I swear. I bet you we will bring this up with our family next time. Okay. We'll ask every single person in your family. They are all going to say there needs to at least be coffee and tea there. And they're not going to go if there isn't? It's, That's so extreme. It's disrespectful to your guests to only serve them water. It's disrespectful to say I'm not going to attend because there's only water. That's disrespectful. A little bit. But when you when you cannot like, oh, you're already occurring such a big expense for a wedding. Have a little bit of drink options there. That's not like that's not the hardest thing to do. It's like, no, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you sit down but you're not going to a restaurant no no no. hold on hold on let me get there you go to a restaurant you sit down you have your meal and stuff like that and at the end you don't tip your server what don't go out to eat if you're not going to tip your server don't go out to eat if you can't afford to tip your server don't have a wedding if you can't afford to have some soda and some tea and some coffee there for your people Mm. i'm a i'm a pretty like i i do drink a lot of water i'm not as much a water person as you but when i'm going to a wedding like there's got to be some stuff there and the fact that you're having a dry wedding just because you don't want to bother with the expense i think is unacceptable i think almost all weddings should there should be alcohol provided it's a fun time it's an event unless there is some alcoholic recovery reasons I don't really agree that weddings should be dry. Hmm. Is it the end of the world? No. But exactly. at the end of the day, you are a host and you are hosting an event for people to come and have a good time. I just feel like those people don't have to come if, they, if it would really ruin their night. I'm going to stand by my opinion. <laughs> Such an asshole. I, I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I disagree. Yeah, you're, you're an asshole. Let another us comment, know in the comments. <laughs> another comment was, I went to a dry wedding. The bride and groom both struggled with alcoholism. That had like three different mocktails to choose from, and it made this celebration still feel adult. It was a lot of fun. They ser- I bet they served coffee with the cake. Coffee and tea with the cake is just necessary. It's not the, it's, that's the part that gets me about this. No tea or coffee. Gotta give wedding guests some caffeine ceremonies are long and boring and i would need caffeine after so after so long so i didn't fall asleep 
Yeah, I'm stronger and stronger on this. Like, you can have no alcohol. That's fine. But water only is so disrespectful towards all of your guests. We don't live in a world where people only drink water. There's juice. There's pop. For there's one coffee. Meal. There's tea. No, you're asking. You're not asking somebody to have a meal, sit down at the dinner table for 30 minutes, eat their food, and drink water. You're asking people to go there for five to seven to eight hours for a whole wedding event. You're asking people to sit through speeches. You're asking them to go through the dance floor, go through all of that stuff, and they can only drink water. This is such a first world problem. Like, yeah, it is. Whatever. This is the world we live in. Talk yeah, about it. Okay, but it's just like. Who the heck cares? Like everybody, ninety nine point nine percent of the population cares. I think maybe if they said, "Okay, we're not gonna have food, no food at the wedding whatsoever," that's different. But just water, who hydrate yourselves? I think everyone else needs to be drinking more no, water. That's... There's water there. They'll be able to hydrate themselves. <laughs> this isn't about hydration. <laughs> this is about taste buds and having a good time okay. at a wedding ceremony. Let's move on. All right. I think uh, it's already twelve thirty. How much, how long do we have? You got one more story. Okay, I have one more story. Am I the asshole for announcing my pregnancy at my wedding? I, 27 female, got engaged to my boyfriend of four years, 28 male, a little over a year ago. My family and his friends have been so happy and excited for us. My family and his know that we want kids and wanted them for a while. Around four months ago, I found out that I was pregnant. We were going to wait until after we got married to try to have kids, but since I was pregnant, we decided to announce it at our wedding that was planned to be three months later. It got harder as the weeks went on to hide it, but I managed. Two weeks ago, we found we finally got married. Despite what happened after the fact, it was the best night of my life, and I don't regret one bit of it. Before people started leaving the reception, my husband and I gathered everyone to announce our pregnancy. Once we did, almost all the people there were happy and excited for us, except my mother-in-law. She called me selfish and rude for making the wedding all about me and that my husband deserved attention too, not just me. Almost everyone there stopped talking, but my husband quickly defended me to his mother. I tried to explain to her that I wasn't trying to take the attention away from my husband and that I just wanted to make the day even more special, but she wouldn't have it. My husband continued to defend me, but my mother-in-law said that I brainwashed him not only into marrying him, but also having a baby with, him, with me. This visibly upset me and I didn't say anything. I just walked away. I went to the bathroom a few minutes in order to calm myself down, but I didn't, it didn't help much. After around six to seven minutes, my husband came to check on me and apologized for his mother and asked if I needed anything. After another 10 minutes or so, I returned to the main area in order to start the after party. I noticed that my mother-in-law wasn't there anymore. I asked my husband why, and she, he told me that she stormed out right before he came to check up on me. I felt bad, but I continued to enjoy the after party. The afternoon after the wedding, I decided to go on my phone and text everyone to thank them for coming. Once I opened my phone, I noticed that I had a text from my mother-in-law. It consisted of her calling me a selfish bitch who only cares about myself and that I don't really love my husband and I don't deserve to have a baby with him. I blocked her number and haven't told my husband that she texted me. I'm not sure if I should tell him or not since I don't want him to ruin his relationship with his mother over something like this. Am I the asshole for announcing my pregnancy at my wedding? Should I tell my husband about what his mother texted me? No, you're not the asshole. And yes, you should text him. Yeah. What is with these crazy in-laws that think that the moms that think everything is about their son and that they sh the attention should be taken away? Oh, listen, when you get pregnant, you're not pregnant. The couple we are is pregnant. pregnant. We are pregnant. If the, you guys, you're a team. And if your husband wanted that to announce that you guys made that decision together. Yeah, it wasn't exactly. like he didn't want to tell anybody and you did it. Then you'd be the asshole. But you guys made the decision as a team to do it. And his mom's a bitch. Yeah, absolutely. You should show him that text message. It shouldn't even be, it shouldn't even be a question of whether or not I should send that text message, show yeah. that text message to my husband. That's outrageous. Thinking it's only about her and stuff like that. It's their wedding. They are pregnant. Yeah. Another theme with these, with these uh, posts are that the wife or the uh, fiance or trying to spare their husband from their shitty mom stop the, sh the shitty stop behavior from the mom let Just them know about the shitty behavior let of their them family know. let them know because if he's smart he would handle this and you know if it comes to it maybe he will even cut her off for being so shitty he should be like if you're that mom is toxic that and mom should be cut off yeah I mean, a toxic grandma exactly okay top comment not the asshole in um what are these called Quotations? In quotations. What? 
<laughs> it's okay. In a brain fart for a second. We lean on each other for things. <laughs> in quotations, my husband and I gathered everyone to announce our pregnancy, in quotations, indicates that your husband was on board with this. It's you and your husband's wedding day, not hers. She's being incredibly rude and making horrible comments. I would recommend telling your husband about this. He is on your side and she is the one ruining her relationship with her son by acting this way period bingo it wouldn't be him ruining the relationship or her ruining the relationship it would be the mom ruining the mom's the relationship. already ruining the relationship yeah. she obviously doesn't have enough know. respect for daughter-in-law doesn't like daughter-in-law because any other normal sane person would be excited and be like oh my god like my son is pregnant like my son is gonna have a baby like they're a team yep. like and you talk about it as if the guy is pregnant too because they're a team we're we pregnant. pregnant we're having a baby exactly yeah like takes two to tango mm-hmm. all right that was well, a good those episode. are yeah that was good those are a lot of stories we're gonna do a wedding episode part two because we had a lot of stories there that we couldn't get through we maybe didn't want to make this episode too long but maybe next line. month maybe next month we'll we'll keep that um let us know in the comments what you guys thought and uh you want to talk a little bit about our upcoming wedding what our updates are we have uh, a venue picked out right no pretty much <laughs> we have a top venue idea. we have a top venue um it's gonna be in tuscany in may 2025 um and yeah it's just gonna be an intimate wedding you're gonna start going wedding dress you've been doing wedding dress searching so far your mom and your sister are getting really excited they are we've messaged the venue we're trying to get a facetime call to go over some details and get a final quote but it seems to be our number one pick it is but we've also got to pick I would say at least two backups and we should go visit the all three of them when we were in Italy or at least try to go for that goal. Right now we have a top two. I don't even know what our top three is, but I know what our top two is. Mm-hmm. So we are, we're, Denver and I are going to Italy in July to see Taylor Swift in yes. Milan. Swifties. Um, so during that trip, we will be also scoping out the venues and making sure that we actually like the look of them in person rather than pictures mm-hmm. um and then after that we should be able to finalize the venue we're aiming for end of may 2025 yes and um yeah i'm very excited it's just gonna be a small intimate wedding like literally close family um like i mean immediate family only and um yep. close friends closest friends 11 11 bedrooms is all we need yeah so we're very excited. It's actually been fun planning it. Now that we got back from Las Vegas, now we've been like actually getting into it and planning it and like going over the venues and yeah. possible options. Teresa's looking at her wedding dress. I got to start working on my tuxedo. I think it, I want a tuxedo. It's a bit early for the, like, the wedding dress shopping. I'm just very excited. So I'm, I'm going to look at and try on my first couple wedding dresses on Saturday, actually, um, with my mom and my sister. And yeah. If you guys have any recommendations for us, just let us know. Yeah, let us know. And let us know of any future topics you want to hear on the podcast. Um, yeah, we're thinking about doing a family drama one, um, maybe a toxic mother-in-law or in-law stories. Mm-hmm. I think that could be a good one. We did start our own um, uh, page on, on Reddit. So if you have any stories, just throw them up on the Thread Talk podcast page on Reddit. Yes, but we'll it's, take a look at it's those. spelt Thread Talk. Talk. No, no, no. The, the page is proper. Our username is not. Oh, okay. I missed the freaking H. Okay, that's fine then. But the the page is proper. Okay. So, yeah. If you want to head over there and um, post Help your own out. stories, we'll be sure to read them on the podcast. And um, any topic, um, we can kind of do maybe like we'll do like a segment um, at the beginning or at the end of every episode, yeah. um, even if they're not in line with the... I like uh, that episode that we're doing. Yeah, I like that. You can also find us on uh, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And YouTube. And if you're and Apple Music, Spotify, if you're just listening, everywhere. Um, Search us, Thread Talk. Follow us on everything. Help us out. Support the channel. We appreciate you guys listening to us. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, Teresa has been enjoying it. Yes, I've been enjoying it. It's good fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys, and Thanks we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.